Today on Community Uplift, who's who that's making a difference in the African American community? Okay, who's who that's making a difference in the African American community in Prince George's County? We are about to look back at some very special people in Prince George's County because it's Achievement Week for the Gamma Pi Qs. So stay tuned because that's what we're talking about today. Hello, I'm Denise Roberts and welcome to Community Uplift. Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated's Achievement Week is right around the corner and this year Gamma Pi is honoring some trailblazing members of the Prince George's County community. Achievement Week is no small potatoes when it comes to the Omegas considering how it began back in 1926 until today. The fraternity has broadened the program to recognize local and national citizens who have and continue to make noteworthy contributions toward improving the quality of life for African Americans. This is very important because Gamma Pi is intentionally bringing light to some true unsung heroes in Prince George's County. Joining me today to talk about Achievement Week and who's making a difference in the African American community in Prince George's County are Tony Lee, the basilisk of the Gamma Pi Qs, Teddy Taylor, a past basilisk and former Achievement Week committee chair for Gamma Pi, and William Reese, also a past committee chair of, of Achievement Week. And first up is Tony Lee, current president of the Prince George's County chapter of Omega Psi Phi Gamma Pi. Welcome back to Community Uplift. It's a pleasure to be back with you. You know, I don't know how you have time to do everything that you do, being <laughs> given your work with the fraternity and your work as a pastor. What is it that you do full time? I uh, serve as a full time pastor at Pillar Truth Bible Church in uh, Capitol Heights, Maryland. Okay. And in addition to that, I serve as a volunteer coach at Oxon Hill High School, mm -hmm. and as well as serving as the Basilis of Gamma Pi Chapter. Okay, and your church also does a lot of work in the community as well, right? Absolutely, we do. Okay, including work with the fraternity as well. Yes, we do. Okay, okay. Um, I, I know Achievement Week um, has been a big part of Gamma Pi, and it's, it's right around the corner. It's coming, right? That's correct. Are Achievement Week is a major, major time for us mm -hmm. uh, as a fraternity as well as a chapter. Okay. Uh, we recognize internationally all of uh, our members as well as those within our community mm -hmm. that have contributed throughout the course of the year. And so it started back in, as you stated, 1926, but in 1927 mm -hmm. is when uh, our fraternity member, Brother Carter G. Woodson, uh, at our 1920 conclave in Nashville, mm -hmm. he instituted the National Negro Achievement Week, okay. and so it became an annual observance uh, as of that, from that point until we're currently, the okay. current state that we're in now. And it's really grown, right? Phenomenally, it yeah. has grown. Okay, and when is it held? It's held every year during our Founders Day. Mm -hmm. uh, we celebrate our Founders Day November the 17th, okay. and so all throughout the week leading up to our Founders Day, we have various activities throughout the, the week that uh, honor our Achievement Week. Okay, um, can you give me an example of some of those um, activities that have been held before? Certainly, we have, uh, we honor our brothers, we get together in fellowship uh, as a group. Mm -hmm. uh, we have various uh, activities throughout the course of the week. We started out initially with a worship service where we come together as brothers and we go to a church and we worship together. Mm -hmm. And then throughout the course of the week we have different events. For example, we have a brothers only dinner mm -hmm. where we come together and we recognize and honor uh, our brothers who are members 
uh, within our fraternity that do extraordinary work throughout the community throughout the course of the year. Mm -hmm. And then from there we move to our community and we begin to have what we call our community program mm -hmm. in which we honor all of the citizens who work extremely hard throughout the course of the year. Okay, okay. And how is Achievement Week um, a part of Gamma Pi's history? It's a major part of the history because of course it starts with our fraternity mm -hmm. and Gamma Pi is approaching 45, well it's 45 years old now, mm -hmm. the chapter, mm -hmm. and so the chapter has been very, it's one of the staple uh, events within our chapter. Mm -hmm. uh, we are thoroughly immersed in the community and uplifting our residents mm -hmm. and so the chapter wants to make sure that it continues to recognize those residents, those citizens who do extraordinary work throughout the course of the year. Mm -hmm. In addition to that we make sure that we have an opportunity to recognize our brothers who who invest themselves throughout the course of the year okay. in uplifting our community as and well. How does the program or how does Gamma Pi connect the program with the Prince George's County community? In a number of ways. We have uh, several brothers who serve uh, throughout the county. Uh, Brother Rasharon Baker serves as a county executive. Mm -hmm. uh, Brother D Derek Davis serves as our county council chair. Mm -hmm. And so we work with, uh, with them on a consistent basis to help the community. And uh, as a result, we have found ourselves uh, working with various other organizations, mm -hmm. uh, school systems, and we, we've tried to do as much as we can mm -hmm. to provide opportunities for the residents of Prince George's County, mm -hmm. which leads to uh, us being able to recognize their achievements. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, as a 30 year plus member of Omega Psi Phi, um, what is your most memorable moment as it, as it relates to Achievement Week? Well, I have several, as I reflect back, uh, I think about <coughs> the number of times that we as an organization, we have gone in and we have assisted. Uh, we've had numerous tragedies as of late, mm -hmm. and uh, I can recall n a number of times where we have collected uh, food, items, water, uh, we've actually gone out into the community and assisted uh, where people have lost uh, uh, a lot of resources. Mm -hmm. uh, we've gone into the community to help rebuild homes with our Habitat for Humanity projects. Mm -hmm. So there, there are numerous uh, opportunities that I can reflect upon that we've, we've been involved in as and, a fraternity. And all of this during Achievement Week? Uh, many of them have been yes. during the course or leading up to Achievement Week. And is this one of your most prominent programs for the chapter? It is. Okay. It most um, certainly would is. you say this is your favorite? I would have to say yes, yeah. it is, because it gives us an opportunity to really highlight the tremendous work that's done throughout the course of the year. Okay. Okay. And are you recognizing um, um, young people as well in this program? Certainly, we are. We have uh, we have a, an award that we present to uh, our athletes, mm -hmm. uh, young athletes, student athletes who are participating in sports throughout uh, the county. Mm -hmm. uh, we recognize young people who we have a essay contest okay. uh, as a part of our achievement week, and so we recognize those young people who are extraordinary writers and mm -hmm. do an excellent job mm -hmm. uh, participating in our essay contest. Mm -hmm. So we do a lot to recognize them. Okay. What about other members of the community? Um, um, well, we have Religious Leader of the okay. Year mm -hmm. Award, Citizen of the Year mm -hmm. Awards that we utilize uh, our fraternity resources to, to mm -hmm. recognize them mm -hmm. and to honor them for what they do all throughout the course of the year. It sounds like a very um, rewarding program. It certainly is. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, you um, are also coming upon Mardi Gras, which is huge. <laughs> Major. Look at you, you look, it just brought a smile to your face. So yes, you must it is. really like that program. Well, Mardi Gras is critical. I mean, it, it does, we, we celebrate Mardi Gras as a part of our mandated program, mm -hmm. but more importantly, it gives us an opportunity to go back into our community mm -hmm. and to enjoy and celebrate mm -hmm. and also raise funds. Okay. Mardi Gras is a major fundraiser for our chapter, okay. and uh, it gives us an opportunity to fund our social action programs mm -hmm. as well as our scholarships that we give out to our young people throughout the county. Mm -hmm. So Mardi Gras is a very exciting time for us, okay. and it will be taking place in March, okay. March the 24th, as a matter of fact, okay. 2018. Okay, so where is that going to be? It will be held at the uh, Gaylord um, Hotel and Resort. Okay, okay. And at the new facility, they have a brand new facility there as yes, well. Yes, they so. do. I haven't had an opportunity to go there yet, yeah. but I might just want to come to Mardi Gras. You're welcome to come. <laughs> we invite you to come and be a part of it. How much money have you been able to raise at, you know, from your Mardi, Mardi Gras events? Well, over the course of the years, that's kind of personal mm -hmm. information, but I'll share it with you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we have raised uh, roughly about a hundred thousand okay. dollars or so. Okay. Uh, and all that money is for scholarships. We utilize it for our scholarships to okay. give back to our students who are 
doing well academically mm -hmm. and we want to help as much as we can mm -hmm. to give them an opportunity to have a better education. That's awesome, awesome information. Um, do you have a website for Gamma Pi um, where people can go to find out more about both of those events? Yes, they can. They can go to www.gammapi.org. Mm -hmm. Again, that's www.gammapi.org. Okay. Tony Lee Vasilis of the Prince George's County Chapter of Omega Psi Phi. I want to thank you again for being here. It was great to talk with you again. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Oh, you're welcome. Don't go away because we will be back to talk about some of our unsung heroes on Community Uplift. It's 3 p.m. For 50 million kids across America, school's out. And for a third of these kids, they're out on their own. Out with nowhere to go. Out with nothing to do. Out all afternoon when anything can happen. But every afternoon is a chance to change America's future. All you have to do is open the door. It's time to support the Boys and Girls Clubs. Great futures start here. Welcome back and thank you for tuning in with us on Community Uplift. Here to talk more about Gamma Pi's Achievement Week program are our next guests, William Reese, a past committee chair of Achievement Week, and Teddy Taylor, a past basilis, also a former Achievement Week committee chair for, for Gamma Pi, and a retired U.S. ambassador of over 30 years. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Okay, so that's a pretty impressive title that you got there. Yes, the U.S. government did give me a title. <laughs> <laughs> so what was that like? Well, I was appointed by President Obama in the first term to be the United States Ambassador to Papua New Guinea, the Solomon Islands, and the Republic of Vanuatu in the South Pacific. Okay. I just concluded a 39-year career in the U.S. Foreign Service as a career U.S. diplomat. Wow, that sounds so exciting, so it, exciting. It, it was. Yes, and Great you're ride. with um, the Veterans Affairs, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and what do you do there? I'm budget officer, okay. and I fund all of our uh, activities uh, stateside as well worldwide. Okay, okay, so you know what it means to raise money. Well, I don't know about raising money, but I know how to spend it. I can <laughs> you tell you know that. how to spend it. <laughs> but with Gamma Pi, you're raising money, right? Oh, without a doubt. Yes. That's our whole objective. Yep, yeah, good, good. So, Achievement Week is coordinated on a national level, right? Can you talk about that, how that's, how that's done? Well, Achievement Week is, uh, as uh, Bossles was saying earlier, mm -hmm. it's one of our staples, and it really is one of the things that we work most at to try to, one, help us to recognize community leaders and uh, partners that we have, as well as recognize students and others that we help uh, in their endeavors going forward as to young men and women in the country, mm -hmm. throughout the country, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. And how is, that program coordinated through your chapter? Well, the committee, uh, which is usually a committee, a uh, fairly large committee, mm -hmm. uh, seeks uh, nominations from within the body, within the Brotherhood, okay. uh, for the fraternal awards, uh, for our community awards, and then we also reach out to uh, churches and schools, for example, for the educator of the year, mm -hmm. uh, we will write to the head of a PTA okay. and say, for example, we're offering this award. If there are any educators in your school that you think are worthy, here are the, here are the prerequisites. Mm -hmm. Please submit a nomination. Mm -hmm. uh, likewise, with religious leader of the year, we, we rely on the community or the brothers themselves to nominate. Uh, people for these awards because they are not to be for fraternity brothers, they're mm -hmm. to be for members of the community. Now, both of you have been chairs in the past. Yes. And you most recently. Correct. So how do you come up with 
or how does the organization or the committee come up with the prerequisites or the criteria for the awards? Well, they're nationally mandated program, and so the uh, requirements are nationally uh, set up for us to, the guidelines. Okay. Uh, now, at the local level, we do have a little flexibility when we talk about the student leaders mm -hmm. and the student athletes and things like that, but for the national uh, program uh, awardees, it's set up by our national headquarters. Okay. Now, since it's it, uh, as a mandated program, um, nationally, um, how does that work? I'm sorry. How does it? You said that it's a, it's mandated nationally. That's correct. Right. So, can you explain that to our audience? Well, <clears throat> our national headquarters have guidelines, and it's uh, as the boss said earlier. It's in the chapter here. We have it in connection with our uh, achievement week goes with our we annual uh, what's it. Uh, program of uh, where we do our achievement week and the, what is it, the? Uh, Founders Day. Founders Day, I'm sorry, yes. Okay. And so what we do is we take the guidance that's set up by our national headquarters and it mandates to us who is eligible for each of the awards mm -hmm. by the number, some of them have the number of years, some of them have the types of programs that they have worked with throughout the year and it's uh, set up throughout the local area for our area and we recognize the commun community leaders mm -hmm. as well as the schools and the uh, brotherhood who are doing uh, certain programs within the fraternity. Okay. Can you walk us through Gamma Pi's observance? Sure. Uh, we'll prob we will start as the boss indicated. Uh, the beginning of the week we'll go to church as a, as a group okay. uh, and worship as brothers. And uh, probably we'll, after that, some of us will branch off and uh, maybe go off to our home churches or uh, maybe we'll share a meal mm -hmm. together. Okay. Uh, I guess Thursday the 17th, uh, no, excuse me, Thursday the 16th, uh, we will have our brothers only uh, dinner. And you said and the 16th of? November. November. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, November 16th, mm -hmm. we will have a brothers only dinner. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, Brother Rasheran Baker, the county executive, will be a speaker. That's for brothers only. Okay. Uh, and that's for us to fellowship and prepare ourselves for uh, the Founders Day celebration mm -hmm. on the night of the 17th at Howard University, oh. uh, where the Omegas, Omega men from the entire metropolitan area will join together on the campus of Howard University. I'm sure we'll hear a very inspirational speech by a uh, uh, one of our national officers or a very senior brother uh, will talk about the founding of our organization at that time uh, and it'll be inspirational, sort of a rededication. Okay. Uh, and uh, then on Saturday afternoon we will have a uh, public program mm -hmm. where we will honor uh, the community, uh, where we will give the community awards and our speaker for that is uh, Brother Alfonso Powell who's a local entrepreneur okay. and a retired educator. Okay. in the community. Okay, okay. How did um, Achievement Week unfold in Gamma Pi for this year? How did, you, how did the planning begin? Well, <clears throat> again, we have an Achievement Week chairman within the uh, chapter. Mm -hmm. uh, he works with his committee, which is a number of brothers who work with him, and we have standard guidelines that are set up for establishing and uh, award, getting the awardees, mm -hmm. and we canvass the brothers mm -hmm. as well as the community, as was stated earlier. Mm -hmm. And we even uh, reach out and uh, recognize during this our uh, scholarship students, who where we award scholarships during the year, and all of this is part of our annual program. It's a scripted sort of uh, program, and an annual event like we do every year, I guess. Mm -hmm. It sounds like a lot of coordination involved. How early do you get started? We start uh, <laughs> immediately after this one, after the one finishes, the committee chair is appointed again for the next year. Okay. And uh, he, or she, he may be a repeat uh, chairman, or he may not, but whoever it is, they get started immediately after the program for this year and they start setting up the guidelines and we start setting up uh, reviews where we uh, recognize and look around the community of what's being done by whom, mm -hmm. be it one of the brothers or the community, community leaders. And we would go through an extensive procedure whereas we kind of vet these individuals out to see who's the best qualified for each of those different awards. It's a number of different awards that we go through. Mm -hmm. Also, can I, can I interject sure. that uh, in terms of one reason we want to start early is we like to lock in speakers. We've had mm -hmm. dynamic speakers mm -hmm. such as Brother Ernest Green, one of the Little Rock Nine okay. who lives in Washington, D.C. Okay. And when you're trying to book dynamic speakers mm -hmm. who have busy schedules, mm -hmm. you have to start planning early. Okay, yeah, sounds, sounds like a lot of work and a big initiative to take on. Um, what 
is uh, the uh, central theme of Achievement Week? I believe the theme this year is when Omega, when the world calls, Omega Men will will come. Okay. Uh, and I think it's uh, surrounding the current uh, malaise that we see in our society and in our communities right now. Mm -hmm. We're kind of in a funk as a people and as a nation. Mm -hmm. And, and we have been noted as an organization to always rise to the occasion when the country needed us to rise to the occasion. So in a way, it's trying to remind the community uh, that we're here, we're still working hard, we haven't given up hope, and neither should they. And I know we mentioned some of the awards in the last segment. Can, are there other awards that stand out to you the most? Which ones are more important or most important to, to you guys? Well, uh, for me, it's Citizen of the Year. Okay. Uh, the Citizen of the Year cannot be a fraternity brother. Okay. It must be a member of the community. And that's someone that has really gone above and beyond the call in their community. For example, we've had people win the Citizen of the Year who were chairpersons of prominent nonprofits in the county. Uh, we've had citizens of the year who were everyday school teachers. Uh, because the, our citizen of the year will then compete with mm -hmm. the other chapters in our district's citizen of the year. Mm -hmm. So we arrive at a district citizen of the year. Mm -hmm. And then the district citizens of the year compete for the national uh, citizen of the year. And you know, our history is full of untold stories of African Americans. Absolutely. Um, do you feel that this program does the same thing? Absolutely. Okay. That's why Brother Carter G. Woodson was so adamant mm -hmm. about us recognizing our own history. Mm -hmm. But then when the fraternity adopted this, the fraternity specifically said current day activities need to be mm -hmm. acknowledged. Mm -hmm. Because let's face it, in 1927, we know what America was like for us. Absolutely. And there was no way for us to recognize ourselves mm -hmm. except for us to do it. Mm -hmm. Given that um, the struggles of those years are different, or would you agree that they're different than what our current struggles are now? There are some similarities, I would say, even mm -hmm. from then to now. We mm -hmm. still experience some of the same challenges mm -hmm. that they had back in the 1920s and all. Of course, the uh, New Year's things have brought about additional challenges that we have to face as a, as a black community. Mm -hmm. And we certainly recognize the steps that uh, the brothers, as well as community, has to endeavor to uh, try to achieve and get uh, our people to be recognized as the scholars and the people that they are. And that's who we're recognizing in Achievement Week, right? Yeah, exactly. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, One can of the you? other, if I may, please, let me sure. interrupt. I'm sorry. One of the other interesting uh, uh, recognitions that we have is the uh, <clears throat> Colonel uh, Charles Young, which is our uh, recognition of the military, the active military person that's uh, in the chapter that is uh, doing something great for the military. And this is a very unique uh, award to me because I have, <laughs> I'm a mil retired military person myself. Okay. And uh, what it does is it recognizes those fraternity members who are active duty military people who are doing their duties and still sure. associated and yeah. working within the fraternity to further our goals and objectives. Okay, yeah, that, that, that's, um, that rings true um, um, because it's, it's almost like our military are not recognized the way that they should be, particularly of African Americans. American. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. How is the community drawn into the program? Um, is it just is it one sided? Is the fraternity always the one reaching out, or do you get interaction from the community as well? I would say that it's a little bit of both. Okay. Uh, we have regulars, uh, people who because it is a free event. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have people that have been with us for a number of years mm -hmm. and they'll call you and say, hey, look, it's time for Achievement Week. I haven't received any information. Okay. So you will do a massive mm -hmm. uh, electronic mail uh, mailing. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll put it out on social media. Uh, one reason for recognizing people in the community is they also have followings. Mm -hmm. yes. If you recognize a pastor, mm -hmm. Congregations coming to see the pastor get the award. Right. Uh, if you recognize the teacher, uh -huh. 
uh, students and parents yep. and colleagues will come and watch this person get the award. So it's a way of bringing the community in. You add the regulars, you add the brothers and our friends and neighbors, and you have a great, and you spend a great afternoon uh, with the brothers of Omega Sci-Fi. Are there aspects of the program where your chapter actually coll collaborates with other chapters? Well, each chapter normally has their own Achievement Week program. Mm -hmm. That does not uh, preclude us from uh, reaching out and associating with other chapters, if anything, in that particular year mm -hmm. is uh, unique that would allow us to collaborate with them and get some gains, if you would, from mm -hmm. collaborating as a team. Okay. And, um, you know, how does Gamma Pi's history tie into the history of the fraternity as a whole? Well, right now we're about the third or fourth largest chapter in the fraternity. Okay. Uh, needless to say, in Prince George's County, uh, 45 years ago, our charter members were some of the first blacks to really integrate Prince George's County, just like the charter members of the other Greek letter organizations sure. in the county mm -hmm. county were. So, uh, as as I understand it, uh, Gamma Pi's Achievement Week. Mm -hmm. Uh, at one time was a black tie Saturday evening event. In fact, when uh, I joined the chapter, it was a black tie evening event mm -hmm. because in the early days, it was the <clears throat> only black tie evening event for blacks in Prince George's County. Wow. So we've evolved over time. Yes. Uh, we think that the Saturday afternoon format works better mm -hmm. for us in today's Prince George's County. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is very much a part of the history because we have uh, prominent politicians throughout our history in Prince George's County have been members of our chapter and our fraternity. Uh, and prominent members of the community have been the recipients uh, of our awards. Um, you've got some notable members in your chapter and now it seems like there's an international officer um, that's in the midst for Gamma Pi, right? Yes, Brother Ooh. Kenneth Rogers is our grand keeper of records and seal okay. and that's sort of like the chief operating officer okay. of the fraternity. Why is it called the international officer? Because we're an international chap we're an international organization. We have chapters across the world. Okay, so the so you know because I always hear about fraternities and and, and, and sororities talking about the national That's level. So Right. Okay. All right. Um who are some of your officers who work on the regional or district levels? Well, currently we have Brother Gordon Everett, mm -hmm. who's the chairman of the Violence Prevention Committee, mm -hmm. very important committee within our district uh, to try and stem the tide of unnecessary of violence. Okay. Uh, brother to brother, person to person, violence in general. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's a big deal. Uh, he is the committee chairman. Uh, our uh, chairman of public relations, mm -hmm. uh, Brother James Alexander, is very intimately involved with all of the public relations issues for the district. Okay. Uh, he works hand in hand, especially on social media issues. And then we've had other brothers who've served in district capacities. I've held a district committee chair. Mm -hmm. Uh, other brothers have held district committee chairs. You come in for a year, maybe two years, you come back out. So we r try to rotate within the district leadership as best we can. Okay. Listen, I want to thank you both for coming on the show today. It's been very enlightening talking with you, and I just want to thank you f both for what you do and what you have done. Thank you. Thank okay. you so very much. <laughs> You're welcome. And we are out of time, but I want to say thank you again to all of our guests today, Tony Lee, Teddy Taylor, and William Reese. And that's our show for today. Thank you for tuning in to Community Uplift. For more information about the show or Gamma Pi's Achievement Week program and how you too can get involved, go to www.gammapi.org. Gamma Pi is also on Twitter at Gamma Pi Qs and on Facebook at Gamma Pi Chapter. And the YouTube channel is Gamma Pi Chapter. Thank you again for watching. I'm Denise Roberts, your host, and we'll see you next time on Community Uplift.